G'day mate, welcome to Friday Facts 339. We've got higher resolution beacons and we've got a redesign process and I've got a redesign mojo. How you doing mate? Mmm, beacon. Mmm, bacon, 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 bacon. So, beacons. Beacons are, well, they're, 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 they're one of the old things. Really, really old things in the game. Um, They've been there forever. Well, turns out we looked up on the wiki, they haven't actually been there quite forever, but they've been there for a very, very long time. Um, we actually just went through a lot of the data files in the game, and a lot of them have a high-resolution version. It might be the same sort of image that we've been looking at for a long time, but a high-resolution version, at least. Turns out beacons don't. Which... Yeah, it's... <laughs> it turns out that the, the text is um, pretty accurate, is that it's one of the few which haven't been touched. Hasn't been touched, hasn't been updated. Um, I've complained about rope reports for a long time because I think they look more out of place than anything else in my factory. I mean, <laughs> bringing up the discussion again, um, they, the, the rope reports use the older style, but they have been touched. Uh, they've, they've used the same shape and style for the sprite, but they did get a high resolution pass. Yeah is probably the, 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 the cover all bases most accurate statement. Beacons, on the other hand, nope, we're still looking at the low-res version because that's the only version that exists. Um, so Woob decided they wanted to play with the beacons, which is probably a good idea. Um, so beacons were made right back at the start of the game. Um, beacons wiki version 6. Yeah, version 6 they were made. Um, and, yep. uh, at the beginning of the project, the style, uh, the style of the game was, uh, less or more clear, more or less clear. Yep. Nothing looks brand new. Everything looks dirty and DIY. Um, the machines to be full of details and trying to explain its mechanics. The colors are provided by the raw materials being red circuits. I see some red green circuits. I don't see any green copper. I see some copper and steel. Sure. We can pretend there's some steel in there somewhere. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's underneath all the, the coils of copper. Yeah, yeah. And the bounding box is everything. And some other rules they don't even remember now. So the bounding box, which we'll cover right now, is the fact that it's a 3x3 three three tile... Well, it's a 3x3 three three machine. And they don't want the graphics to slip outside that. And apart from the spinny thing on top, everything fits in that 3x3 three three box. So it doesn't block the side of anything behind it, which is... Fairly important when you cannot change the... Yeah, viewing angle. The viewing angle of a game, yeah. It's also kind of worried... Are you worried that they say, and some rules that I don't even remember now? Like, do they not document this stuff? Well, look, in the starting games, starting days of a game fresh off a of Kickstarter or Indiegogo, no, lots of companies don't document anything. Um, and we've said it before. It's like, you know, it's two or three devs. They just remember everything and hit the ground running and look i understand the pros and the cons if you spend a lot of time documenting stuff you're not spending time actually working and creating something new the catch is if you end up seven years later and you're you're, you're finally moving a game that started as a crappy well well no 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 a, a, a crappy attempt at a mod of minecraft and you're actually moving into a full release with an engine you built from scratch into a version 1.0 of a game that is highly, highly polished, then it would probably help to document some stuff seven years ago so you could refer back to it now. So it's Cash 22. Um, but, oh, Mojo's sending me stuff. Oh, yeah, what is picture. that? That that thing there is the old beacon graphics. Oh, we're going to cover that at the end of this video. <laughs> okay, so, um, but yeah, um, the main handicap they had at the time is they didn't know how the average player would work with beacons, and I'm willing to bet when they came out in version 6, nobody touched them, uh, or very, very limitedly. Um, in fact, 9 times out of 10, like a beacon-like item, which get used fairly regularly in tower defense games, only one of them can affect a tower, so the way I'd actually expect people to play, and I have seen this happen with new players, is they try and cram as many buildings around a single beacon as possible. Um, so yeah, they produce a nice looking model, but once it's placed in the factory, it doesn't look that nice due to the lack of context. Um, so the process of making a new beacon. 
The Beacon is a very advanced late game entity usually placed very close to each other in long rows, horizontal or vertical, which I would completely agree with all of that except for the advanced late game entity. It's copper, steel, red and green circuits. Um, the Beacon itself is pretty cheap. The modules that go in it, completely different story. They're super expensive. Oh yeah, that's, that's where all the cost goes. Yeah. And the power, arguably, as well. Uh, power would be a very, very small argument. Um, so, the main objectives were better coverage, um, and integration in the game, but also express expressivity um, of the new beacon. So, um it'll be really good to understand the use of the machine just by looking at it and we've got some some hand-drawn napkin art and i love napkin art um it's how all this stuff starts out it is ideally. it is um tesla pulse lights lights motion up blinking light inside, inside the, the base. base left to right oh like like a either ticking back and forth or like a um lighthouse going around and around and around in the inside um, Which is actually hilarious because the original icon for the beacon was a, is a basically a lighthouse. Is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, rusty, covered with lights, laser lights. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, look, I love napkin art. Napkin art is is expressive. It's dirty. It's quick. It's hand drawn. It, it it gets things happening in a hurry, and I, I love them. Um, so it needs to be a tower in order tr to transmit the effect. That much they'd agree on. But it also has to the tower has to be transparent. Otherwise, it will occlude the entities behind it, creating a problem of readability. And a lot of people, you'll notice this if you have a twisted belt behind a power pole. You can't see the damn twisted belt. Um, that's probably the quickest and easiest reference I can give. Because um, power poles stick up in front of belts and you do it all the time. You don't even realize it um, They also wanted to look modern and they want a conical shape. It reminds of a Soviet space capsule um, Or a dragon capsule as well from SpaceX um, The blinking lights will help not only look more technology will also help for visibility Due to its normal use in long rows, rows the plan was to create an extra tile set of cables connecting the beacons to each other so the composite would look much more uh, much more interesting organic with the player moving under a network of beacons which i like the idea of sounds like a great idea that's what i thought when it, at first and then it's like hang on you make a row of beacons it's just going to be a big ball of cables occluding everything which defeats the original it um, is it previous is, uh, uh, thing they want to avoid but i'm thinking rather than like a, a, a bunch of cables if you had like Okay, so we all know if you put down an assembler and you line up the beacons, you get three above it, three below it, three left, three right, whatever numbers you want to have, you can have all three affect the one assembler machine. If you offset them, you can get four. What I'd really like to see is rather than a link of cables, just a link of lights. Like, not even, you know, semi-transparent oh, like lights. of light shooting at the... Um the assembly machine or whatever at the assembly machine or at each other so it, like it creates like a uh like a science fiction like force field between the beacons of just just a little bit of shading and color between one and the next and the next and the next um just so you can sort of infer infer that that's a straight line of beacons and if you put them at a t intersection you know you'd have obviously have beacons with four sets of lights coming off it joining to its four neighbors and so on and so forth i just think the, the idea of cables, maybe not so much because they're a solid item you can't see through, but a yeah. banner Yeah, the other thing with light. cables yeah. um, I was actually sort of leaning on was if you make it look like electrical cables, then you confuse it with your electric network. And then if you go the other route, you could confuse it with the circuit network. The only way they could do cables is, and, and I, I assume most of the people that have played Factorio have seen Satisfactory at least, is if you use the satisfactory type cable cable that they have in a roll that goes power to pole to power pole, which is black, it's thick, it's heavy. It looks like three or four cables braided together. Um, but yeah, that's so a heavy duty cable. Yeah, heavy duty cable, but that's gonna be big, it's gonna be nasty, and it's gonna definitely block the view of whatever's underneath it. Yeah. Um, because we're only talking like, you know, if you hung a cable from machine to machine, you're gonna take up like, a quarter of a tile 
And if you do two cables, like they've got in the hand-drawn art, or three cables, you know, that that's potentially half a tile worth of occlusion from a cable hanging from machine to machine, which is going to start adding up. So I would have liked if they ran with the idea a little bit and just thought outside the box and gone, okay, maybe not cables, but, you know, if there was a shimmer of light between them, maybe. Um, as I, I say... Think, yep. You know what? Uh, uh, for that to work, for it to work better, you would need to change the concept of what a beacon does. Like, currently, it just affects everything around it, and I know... I saw it earlier today, and Madzer has mentioned it many times, and that is that a beacon, give it a bigger range, but give it... Give every machine a cap on how many beacons can affect it. It would change Fundamental Factorio too much, and it's too oh, yeah. late in the game. To too that, late in I the think. game to, to change that sort of gameplay. Um, yeah. And the, um, but the fundamental idea is to move away from the idea of doing, you know, the, the full block of 12 beacons or the 8-8 eight, eight beacons or the, or the single 4. Because that's basically the only way you can really use beacons effectively. Yeah, look, look, full, full blocks of beacons are definitely the way to go. You know, um, like I said, with the tower defense reference, you know, putting one beacon, it's it's not really worth it. And I, I admit, I probably did the same when I first got them and tried to cram as many assemblers around it. Oh but, yeah, I certainly did the same thing. But, but that's, again, that's how it works in tower defense, is you normally only, you only want to build as few as possible and you want to get as much bang for your buck out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the idea is, is the exact opposite. You want to build as many of these things as possible, mainly for UPS reasons rather than efficiency reasons, and then you want to, you know... And just eat the cost. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Um, but yeah, back to their idea of cables. Uh, works great on paper, but once we get to work, we realize there's... Uh, once we get it to work we realize that it is needed to fill a square of three by three tiles once in the 3d viewport this concept changes too much uh to not think of different solutions so back to their their the particular view of factorio has which is a 45 degree offset 2d above vision something 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 i can't remember they got exact names for it but um yeah, things that are round are no longer round when they get lobbed into Factorio and its particular viewing angle, or everything looks a little bit weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, and the other thing they said is connecting the entities with cables, it looked like beacons are interacting which are, uh, with each other, creating a more powerful net of beacons. And this is sending the wrong message, which I sort of agree with and I sort of don't. Because I get it, it, yeah. And they're not wrong. And it's a fair argument. It is, but it, it it's, again takes the player from one beacon surrounded by assemblers to four beacons and one assembler that gets a big bonus because it now has the effect of three or four or five beacons because you've learnt to string them together and then put a machine right in the middle to have the effect of all of them. Just saying, just saying. Um, I think that I think it's, it's the right choice though because it does create a whole sense of ambiguity for anyone who, if you don't know any better, how would you know? I mean, you're building them, linking together. How do you know that they're you're benefiting yourself by having many machines covered by like one machine covered by many beacons, or trying to connect them together because they're boosting each other? Yeah, There's no way of knowing. Ah, uh, the, the only way to know is, is pay attention to the GUI and see what the GUI tells you. But I have to admit, from every single one of my plays of every single different game possible, I don't tend to look at the GUI. I just tend to build and hope for the best. Um, but yeah, continuing with here, reading where, is hard. Yeah, reading is hard. <laughs> reading is hard. It takes effort. It takes time. And normally you have to slow down to do so. Um, and normally you're just caught up. You're having too much fun. You, you you don't care. So, but yeah, they decide to save the good stuff and solve the problems with a new version. So we go back to more napkin art. Um, the main problem that we need uh, was the need of stuff in the tower into a square area. The rule of the collision box forces every entry becomes sort of a blocky box on top of the ground. Uh, always uh, for this entity, we really needed the tower. And we've got, again, some really, really interesting, like definitely more time spent on it, hand-drawn art. Um, so this issue with the new concept appears, let's create a hole in the ground that covers the collision box area, then build the tower inside. It looks higher than it, what it really is, and the inclusion within the tiles uh, behind us is within acceptable limits. So basically put a hole in the ground and shove it in a hole in the ground, which I like. It, it solves all their problems. It's a clever idea. Um, apart from the big stabby tower in the, in the going yeah. up to the sky, but we'll get to that. Um, 
The beacon looks uh, modern, colorful, tall, and high-tech, and it integrated in the world of Factory. It even solves the collision box issue with easy to recognize a form from afar, but if something wrong, it doesn't look fine in an array, and in the center of the entity is far too complicated. It creates a chaos of pixels that is hard to see, especially overlapping with another beacon vertically. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, they didn't put in another image with a stack of these vertically. Every, every example we've had, they're all horizontal, which... Yeah. Yeah. That I, would. Uh, uh, you yeah, having all those antennas. They would actually overlap each other. They would. Uh, big long pole. But does it matter? That's my question. Um, because I think the point of the antenna would come just below the yellow circle, so it uh, probably yeah. wouldn't matter. Yeah, they wouldn't quite be overlapping, but it'd be very close. It'd be close, but like, like I said, does it really matter? Um. And technically, look, if you just took half the height off the antenna, it'd probably be fine. Um, in fact, I don't even know if the antenna needs to be there, apart from the lightning sparks are really cool. That that much I'll say. If, if anything, the antenna is a little bit dominating, and probably only needs to be a single spire, not four of them joined together. Yeah. Coming together at a point. Yeah, look, um... can't give that as an example um um but i'm just thinking there's this a science experiment there's a science experiment has um i think it's used around tesla coils that just has a pole and at the end of the pole there's a very very large ball of metal and that would work as an antenna just just a straight up single antenna with a large knob at the end um van de graaf yeah, I'm thinking it's like the Van der the one with the V's, the V's, the spark goes up, isn't it? That's uh, Jacob's Ladder. That's Jacob's Ladder. I can't remember. I'm not good at this stuff. That's why I have a mojo around here to try and translate Jedi into something that everybody else can speak. Let's go with a Van der Graaf. Um, but yeah, better beacons, Mark Three, Mark Three, and one Friday facts. I think um, to solve the ultimate complication for the array situation, few changes are relevant to do. Uh, clearing up the center of the entity in a way that works as a background with himself when overlapping in a vertical or any other tall entity like a pole. So they cleaned up the center in a couple of ways. They cleaned up. The tower itself, it actually doesn't look as tall as it did previously, you know, one beacon ago. Um, they've added the ring around the middle, and yeah. the spire is just as tall, but I think it, it, it sort of looked like it has a little ball at the top now, maybe? Um, mm, I think it's just binding the four pokies to... Maybe it's, it's a little bit more rounder than it was pointing the last one. Um, less likely to stab a robot on the way through. Um, and yeah, oh, no, in fact, one of the three variants, um, the end, the rightmost one has a, a slightly shorter, uh, yeah, it does have a slightly shorter antenna and it looks like the top of that one is a, is a clear X, whereas the other ones, it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, uh, I see X's for all of them. So, well, it just means that obviously I need glasses. All right. Um, I don't know. I think... Just a plus, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I actually prefer the previous beacon at this point. Yeah. Yes, no? I don't know what I like. You don't know what you like. Okay, okay. I've got some examples we're going to get to shortly. Uh, I think I my problem is when you look at it in the game, given the picture that they give... It's right next to the furnaces, which probably isn't the best thing to put them next to. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 yeah. Uh, in a common array situation, it's going to be really nice seeing the beacon with some variations. So they did make three different variations, um, which are slightly offset from one another, which I I, I, uh, I don't know about. Um, and they'd love to use this sort of variations for every entity, but the amount of work in VRAM needed would be just insane, which... I fully understand to a certain degree because, okay, go back three steps. So original beacons, the bottom half of the beacon, the boxy itself, boxy part itself is one, one asset. Okay. And then one very ancient picture, one very ancient picture. And then the spinny thing on the top is like 16 or 32. I think it's, it's because of its age. It's probably only 16 different offsets and that part spins. So that's a separate 
a separate item that has to be loaded into the graphics card to be rendered. Now, what I would like to see for the current beacons, and it's something that when I saw the new version and the ring around the middle, and just used to beacons spinning, I was like, oh, they're going to spin on the ring. And then I read the text. I'm like, oh, they're not going to spin on the ring. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like them to spin on the ring. They don't have to spin fast. They could spin really slowly, same as the, the current beacons do. Or just um, spin, um, not do just do complete circles, just spin a little bit randomly, just turn backwards and forwards. Or something. Yeah, look, like 30 degrees one way, 30 degrees the other, and back and forth. Just, just something. Like, beacons are one of the few things in the factory that that moves like we okay inserters move sure but they they just do 180 degree swings um and they're also small and they're also small. these are considerably and, bigger and we ignore them let's be honest um whereas beacons are large enough that they, they create movement they create something happening on the screen um same with the lightning effects that they had on the previous beacon i liked the lightning effects um it was just something different they have included the lightning effects which we'll get to shortly but yeah i i just I just assumed because the ring was there, the ring's perfectly round, they were going to spin. Right? Or at um, least do something with them. Yeah, at least do something with it. Like, even have the ring spin with some sort of something on it so you can clearly sp see that it's a spinning object, not a static object, or, or, or something. Something, something. Um, even if they just had the little yellow eye part spin in the middle, right? Um, split the the... the the space capsule in the two halves, the top half with the yellow eye thing and the bottom half that stays static and just spun the top off. Just just something, 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 something. I wonder um, how it will look without the eyeball. Well, the eyeball's funny. So the eyeball is yellow. And I'm not sure why the eyeball is yellow. More importantly, why is the eyeball not blue for speed modules and green for efficiency modules? Oh, it inherits the color of whatever module you put into it. Yeah. And obviously, the more speed modules you put in there closer to speed three, the deeper the blue goes, and the more closer to efficiency three, the deeper green it goes. If you put in a mix, you get a purple green mix, whatever color that is. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, blue green mix, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they have the ability to do more with it, and I'd really like to see them, you know, just simple things like using the lights as, as a indication of of you know what modules in there but i do have to say first thing okay so i'm going to paste this image to mojo because he hasn't seen it yet um but i gotta say that the beacons themselves the new version remind me from the sentinel remind me of the sentinels from matrix so that's oh, the yeah. octopusy things with legs out every different direction down to the ground and back up the sides and big head in the middle uh, the beacon is spidertron Oh, yeah, Octopusatron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the finally, the last image is, yeah. Um, right now they're working on the animation of the beacons. Obviously not movement. We just get sparks. I'm trying to make it subtle because the way it here it is here, it causes me too much attention and saturates the screen very easily. That looks like really good animations. Uh, but yeah, that looks like way too much to have a, a line of these going up and down my base. I think that'd get really annoying. Yeah, that would get pretty wild. Actually, I take that back. The left hand one, I think it'd be okay. Because it seems pretty random. The right hand one, especially if all those rings of lightning synced up, which they'd probably do to save on VRAM, that'd get really annoying really fast. Uh, yeah. And that reminds me of the Tesla coils from Command and Conquer. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, because i got to say, like, like, the way they charge up, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Tesla coils did the exact same thing. They... they Yeah, it sort of build up around from the bottom of the coil up to the top. Up and then the top. Yeah. blast. And then blast something. And, yeah, it's... Yeah. Like, I know they're all old school RTS fans, and... Obviously, have a touch of Matrix in, in in there as well, and yeah, I, I I'm not sure. I'm really not sure when it comes to these beacons. Um, I think also just being that red just makes them really stick out. As I say, like I, I look at the reference picture of them in 
in the base and they stand out for a number of reasons. Possibly partly the eyeball, the red, the bright red, and the fact yeah, the that they're next to furnaces. The bright red, the, well, they're next to furnaces, and this made us look up furnaces. So electric furnaces were introduced in version 0.6 and has not had a graphics refresh since. It has been updated to high res graphics because we went and checked that. But um, Yeah, I actually got you a picture of the old one. Uh, and old, as it turns out, old beacons as well. Yeah, well, I haven't brought up old beacons yet, but basically it's the same. It's it's just a slightly lower quality version of this. Stone furnaces, same. they were introduced in 1.0. They did get a graphics refresh in version six. Technically, I'm pretty sure I looked at them, they had a high res version. I think they have had a high res past, um, but they the the graphic itself hasn't been changed. Now, don't get me wrong; like a stone furnace doesn't need a change, a steel furnace doesn't need a change. They're they're really really good as they are. In saying that, steel furnaces did have a graphics in update in twelve. Uh, electric furnaces have never had a graphics update. Could they do with one? Possibly. Um. They sort of look a little bit of out of place compared to everything else. In they, saying they that, they sort of sit in that middle ground like robot ports do. Well, look, in saying that, nobody looks at smelter lines. Okay, at the end of the day, nobody stops and looks at the smelter lines and and smelters are something you build. They're out there. You forget about them. You never look at them again. You spend a lot of time running around your base, running between assemblers, inserters, robot ports, and those sorts of things. That's why robot ports, I think, should look a little bit closer to the the new look of Factorio. Whereas smelters can look like the old look of Factorio to a certain extent, because nobody cares. Um, it's very, very unlikely you find a smelter in the middle of a base. Unless you're on V's base, at which point you can find a smelter right next to you for no reason whatsoever. Um, find a smelter next to a lab just because. Just because, yep, yep, because for reasons. Um, and yes, Mojo has kindly provided a lovely picture of the original beacons. In what version of Factorio is this? Uh, six. Version six. Version six. Six point four. Version six point four with the Power Ranger. The Power Ranger character that that's a steel furnace in the top left hand corner that he cut off. That's an electric furnace on the right, which is pretty much what we're looking at now. In or less, version um, eighteen, yeah. Yeah, I mean the version eighteen one did get a it is a higher resolution version. It is it's higher the same resolution. Thing. It's it's it looks identical, but yeah, it, it's higher, it's prettier. Those old beacons are yes. <laughs> exactly. You yes. can actually notice too the um the wooden power poles are actually the current wooden power poles. Oh they are, yeah, they went back in design. Yeah, they actually changed them. Yes, they changed wooden power poles partway through to something alternate and then went back design-wise to what they had earlier. Yeah, Obviously, they just did high-res uh, re-renders. Yeah, yeah, really, really good version of, of, of what they used to have or something similar to what they had. Um, but yeah, old, old-school Factorio. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, next to the furnace uh, and the red belt is a lamp. Yeah, oh, the old lamps that looked like... Um, Three spot lamps shoved into the ground. Yeah, I remember those. They got changed out in... 15, yes. 14? Oh, eight, no, like nine or something. No, no, way after that, sure. I'm sure. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, you're going to make me look at version 12, because I don't remember them being in version 12. Uh, I'm going to beat you and I'm going to look it up on the wiki. Uh... Five. Okay, so they definitely had a new version somewhere in the line because now they have the <laughs> version that has this little six in the image, and it's not mentioned on the wiki. Yeah, Bilka, the wiki is a little bit sparse in that regard. The Bil Bilka, the wiki needs an update. I need to know what version the lamp had a new, better, improved graphic. Oh, it's the, the classic. The current lamp is in version twelve, which is what I remember. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I've just found out I played Factorio before version 12. It has been confirmed. Because I remember well, the old lamps. I remember them because I knew Factorio long before I started playing it. Long nah, before I bought it. No, nah, no. Nah. I, 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 I found out about it and played it all at the same time. Uh, I had a mate come over and say, here, we're going to play this. And installed it on my PC. 
and then we played Factorio, and then I didn't like Factorio. And then here I am, several years later, I don't want to know how many hours I have in Factorio. Um, yep. So, beacons, um, last thing to add about beacons, uh, the layer of the beams and the light in the middle will be separate and tittable uh, by a single sprite sheet. Probably the yellow rounded light also. So it'll be available for any modder to make a modified beacon by just changing the RGB values. Uh, there are many things uh, about the process of redesign here that, that is it Albert? Albert. Albert yes. skipped out on uh, because this post already long. I hope that it was very interesting for you. Uh, in future releases very soon, you'll be able to play with a new beacon. I am interested to find out what the last beacon is like. And I'm also, and this is the one that, that, that really, really interests me. How long between the re release of the new beacons and somebody writing a mod that changes the color of the lighting, lightning and the light to match what type of modules you have in the beacon. Or um, even just have disco eyeballs. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Why did you say that? Somebody's going to do it now. Because now, then you can combine it with disco labs. Uh-huh. And you've got you to call the, that particular mod Mojo's Beacons. Because you got oh, the yeah. idea from Mojo. It was entirely his fault. Prior to that, you hadn't thought about it. Um, but, yeah, that okay, sounds... Okay, so disco beacons is my fault. Uh, no, no, Mojo's Beacons. Mojo's Beacons. Mojo's Disco Beacons. Mojo's Disco Beacons. We're, that's 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 the final name for the mod. Um, yeah, I, I'm willing to bet so many mods within six hours. Six hours, it'll be out. It'll be on the mod portal. Um, yeah. Vincent's Beacons. Uh, <laughs> they'd have an SMG on top of it. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> look, SMG, you made a rocket launcher. Uh, well, it is something I've seen some people mention that this particular color of red is really only used for small biters. Um, which means, okay, beacons, medium, 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 smalls are brown. Oh, uh, smalls are Medium's brown. Okay. Red. Medium, medium biters. So it is something that you're going to get in late game. Normally by late game, you haven't seen a red biter in a long time, but red's not really a color in the factory. Um, yeah, that's why I think it stands out in the picture. Well, it's the same as long head inserters stick out in in your factory because red's not really color used. You have red belt, you have red long head inserters. Everything else pretty much follows the standard of belts, like yellow inserter, yellow belt, blue inserter, blue well, blue belt doesn't really make sense because green, <laughs> green ones are faster. <laughs> but then the green inserter matches with the. Uh, green assembler, the blue inserter matches with the blue inserter, the grey assembler matches with the yellow inserter. Like, yeah, there's, there's definitely... I feel like the argument's falling apart as you say it. No, no, the argument's there. The problem <laughs> no, it's is... water time. The... It's water time as a colander, definitely. <laughs> the problem is the, the actual devs didn't decide to stick with their own colour schemes, but it's got a theme going, and the theme is red is not really a colour in the factory. I think that's what faster. we're... <laughs> no, blue belt goes faster. Blue go belt goes faster. Although, hang on. No, a red is so, a red inserter does technically go faster than a yellow inserter. Yeah, it does. It's like halfway between that and a blue one. Yeah. Yeah. So red technically goes faster sometimes, very rarely. Um Yeah, I don't know. And it used to be the fastest way to learn load a train was um two banks of red insert. Long inserters. Yes, yes. From but, two rows of chests. Yeah, but that was changed with stack inserters and... And a few other things. A few other things, yeah. Um, but I don't know, like... Can you go back to the, the rusted metal look of the original? The rusted wound copper cable color look of the original beacons for the new red beacons? Like, is that possible? Is there a good suggestion color choice for these beacons? Disco eyeball? 
No, not out, <laughs> not out of Mojo's mouth. Okay, well, with that uh, said, I think that's it for this Friday Facts. I've gone through the pretty pictures Mojo's provided of super, 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 super horribly early beacons. Um, and that they look like they're from the Matrix and they want to eat you, but that's okay. Because you're probably not playing the Matrix, you're pro probably playing Factoria. Um, nothing else? Oh, yeah. Um, and the, the screenshot of the new beacons looks like my smelter. Oh, yes, yes. Mojo was 100% confident it was his smelter array. Turns out his is better. Yeah, and that has better beacon, beacon coverage. Better beacon coverage. Um, they, it looks like he was confident it was his smelter array, and it looks like it's just a very poor copy. So either the devs chose a bad one from Factorio Prince, or need to take better screenshots of Mojo streams. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Either way, invitation is the highest form of flattery. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I think that's where we'll leave it there. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you guys in next week's Friday facts. All right. Bye. Bye bye.